Well, here I am again, Ellen the Baker Chick, um, bringing you a special Thanksgiving recipe. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I should have done this last week, but you know, life gets in the way. Sometimes we had company come in from out of town and that took precedence. Um, this recipe I'm going to make for you today is one of two Thanksgiving recipes. The other one will be in a separate video. I am. I wanted to make something Thanksgiving-y, and I was thinking yams. A lot of us make yams, candied yams, or the yams with the marshmallows. And I thought, what if I could do a roll that, or a bread or a roll that includes yams in the dough, then you could make those ahead, stick them in the freezer, and yams done, and you don't have to add that yams dish that you're making at the last minute for Thanksgiving. So this is just a crazy idea I had and I call it, I yam what I yam dough. <laughs> um, today I'm gonna make crescent rolls, but really you could just divide it into about 16 balls, divide the dough into about 16 balls and just, you know, put them in pie plates or a rectangular casserole and just make it like a pull apart up to you. I'm just showing you the dough and I'm gonna make crescents because they're pretty. So, I'm going to start with half and half. Um, if you're in another country, you don't know what half and half is. Half and half is half milk, half cream. It's a dairy product we have here. If you don't have it, just use full fat milk or you could use heavy cream or you could use half heavy cream and half milk. It's all good. So I'm gonna put that in because in my bread machine, liquids go first. Next ingredient, I have molasses. And I've sprayed my measuring cup with some nonstick spray so the molasses will not take us as slow as molasses to get out. <laughs> because who's patient? I'm not patient. All right. And... In this case, I have already cooked mashed yams. There's nothing in here. I didn't add butter or milk or anything to the yams. I just peeled them, boiled them until they were soft enough to mash, and they are wet. I consider this a wet ingredient, and I pop them in there. Get rid of that. I need a paper towel. And that is... Those are the wet ingredients, half and half, the yams and the molasses. So now we need to add the dry ingredients. And, oops, and I am finding that sometimes powdered things like spices, in this case cinnamon, seem to blend in better, along with dried herbs, seem to blend in better if I mix it in with the flour. That's kind of my new discovery. So I'm just going to... Mix the cinnamon right into the flour. You know that the recipe with all the amounts is going to be in the description of this video, just as a reminder. All right, I think that's uh, in there. I'm gonna pour in my flour. And I like to kind of pour back and forth to as much as possible, although I do have a a hump in the middle, but that's okay. All right, and I have brown sugar on the right, just a little bit. I have my salt on the left. I have my butter, it's about one stick of butter. And I, now I have a Zo V Plus. My Zo has a rest function or preheat in the beginning and it will bring my liquids and my butter and everything to the optimal temperature. If your bread machine does not have that, you will have to warm your liquids, let those yams come to room temperature, and soften your butter. I don't have to do that. So I just put the butter around the edges. I have a, everything has its place Type thing. Now, I wish I was like that in my house as much as I am with how I load the bread machine because <laughs> I have clutter everywhere in my house. 
And we're gonna make a little, little well in the flour, pour the yeast in. Um, if you happen to have the SAF Instant Yeast Gold Label, this is a sweeter dough, so that would be a good thing to use. If not, you can just use regular SAF Instant Yeast. All right, um, as soon as we turn off the camera, I'm going to put this into the bread machine and select Dough Course. And the next time the video comes back on, I will be rolling out the dough and making crisp. This is about seven or eight minutes into kneading and I'm gonna check the dough. tacky but not sticky. It's mostly forming a dough ball. I'm thinking it might need just a, sorry for the crazy video, just a teeny, teeny bit more flour. I added um, more flour a minute ago because it was too wet. Still a little wet, almost there. So I did have to add a little bit of flour and I will update the recipe. This recipe is something I've completely invented on my own. I started out wanting to make it maple flavor and I added maple syrup and maple extract and maple sugar and the maple flavor just never came through and it just didn't have any zing so I switched to molasses <laughs> and cinnamon and, and then I got it right. So. Um, because the yams are so wet, the dough feels pretty wet, but it's not sticky. And it's pretty much cleaned the sides. It's not pooling underneath the paddles. So I think this is a good dough ball. Looks like it's rising nicely. Continuing with our yam dough. And what I like to call a yam when I yam dough. <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book, right? This dough or any potato dough is just really like delicious to touch. <laughs> I just have to say, tactilely speaking, this dough feels really nice, like really soft, fresh Play-Doh. So what I'm going to do is divide it so I can show you two ways to have fun with this. The slightly more labor intensive way and the slightly less labor intensive way. I'm gonna roll, roll, roll. Whenever I say roll, 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 I think of the movie Young Frankenstein, for those of you who've seen it, when, uh, Fr was it Frederick Frankenstein or Froderick Frankenstein is arriving at the the castle, and Terry Gar, the nurse, would you like to roll in the hay? It's really fun, and they go, roll, roll, roll in the hay. And it, you know, the innuendo there, I'm sure is not lost on you, but it's just a silly movie, and we love that movie. All right, we're getting there. Look how nice, this doesn't have that super elastic, shrinky thing that happens with some doughs, it's just, an absolutely delightful dough to handle. Okay, yes, I know this is not a circle. It will not matter. So I'm just going to cut it in half. You could use a pizza roller for this, by the way, if you wanted to. And again, and eh, I'll make big crescents. Save a little time. You can make them as large or as small. Here, I'll make a couple of smaller ones by cutting this in thirds. Medium-sized ones. I don't care as much for uniformity because I know that when I go and I walk up, I might want a small cookie or a small roll or I might want a big cookie or a big roll. So I kind of like to make different uh, sizes. So rolling up a crescent roll, you just start at the wide end and I kind of stretch a little bit as I roll. And after I get it, I kind of pinch the end and bend it into a crescent. It's 
Let's go for the next one. I think you get the idea. And I'll show you what the whole tray looks like in a minute. And then we'll go on to the next shape. So I've got a tray of crescent rows. You can see they're all different sizes. I like it that way. If you want to make them more uniform, you could do that. I've preheated my oven just for one minute only on the lowest temp, which on my oven is 170. If you have a proof setting, use proof. I don't. I'm just going to put this in here, set my timer for 40 minutes so they can rise. Okay. Now we're gonna to get to the other dough. The other way you can shape them, or one of the other ways, you could probably think of a lot of ways, is I've just taken the rest of the dough and I'm kind of rolling and stretching a little bit. And I'm just going to cut them. And if I were being patient in particular, I might have weighed all of the rolls to make sure that they were about the same size, but I am too lazy to do that. So I'm just making these into little balls. Kind of push the top to the bottom. I don't know how to explain it, but anyway, this dough, you can roll it between your fingers. However, you can get it shaped and you don't have to space them very close together. I know that's a lot bigger than that one, that's okay. Any kind of potato dough, I think I said this before, but it's just really, really nice to work with. It's just very soft and pliable. I think this is a little bit big. I'm just gonna cut that off. Do some robbing from the rich to give to the poor, like Robin Hood. <laughs> well, some of you young people may not even understand that reference. I don't know. Put that there. Usually I would have a whole recipe or most of a recipe in there. and then they would be, you know, closer together. But they will rise, and they will be somewhat closer together, and it's okay if they're separate. But you get the idea, I'm just trying to show you two types of rolling out. Um, I would have put, obviously, more rolls in here than, uh, than this, but because I made half crescents, half these, that's what's happening, okay? I'm gonna pop this in the same oven to roll, to rise with the crescents, and we will be back. So the yam, crescents, and rolls have risen. And I'm going to quickly slap on some egg wash. It's probably pretty much what I'm doing, isn't it? Slapping it on. <laughs> And I'm going to sprinkle with turbinado sugar, or sugar in the raw, as some of you know it. And that will make it sparkle. Here are the rolls. I didn't form them super neatly, but you get the idea. <laughs> This just gives a little sparkly crunch on top, totally optional. You don't have to do this. So I'll tell you a funny story, very brief story when I'm doing it. I had this crazy, crazy idea that since people put marshmallows on yams, it would be fun 
I'm going to do the rolls now, that it would be fun to put marshmallow cream or marshmallow on top of these, then use a torch to brown it. And so my husband and I experimented. <laughs> it tasted good, but it was an ugly fail. I mean, I would have liked to try again, but he just said no. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bake these and then I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Here are the finished yam rolls. I'm the first to admit that they aren't as pretty. They have all those bubbles. I'm not sure why. It's exactly the same dough as the crescent rolls. They're going to taste delicious, but um, ah, they're just not as pretty. The funny thing is I've made this recipe before and they were beautiful, nice and smooth on top. So who knows, could be the weather, could be operator error, I'm not quite sure. On the other hand, Look at the crescent rolls. They are absolutely gorgeous. And really, it will take you no more than 10 minutes to roll up the whole recipe. So I wouldn't make those pull apart rolls. <laughs> I would make the crescent rolls. They're beautiful. So there you go. There's your Thanksgiving yam dough. I am what I am crescent rolls. Hope you enjoyed.